that was like the basic beginning radar. And that's the way fighter radars were, you know, in the 50s and the 60s. So then the F-14 comes along and it uses something called uh, pulsed Doppler. And instead of showing the range to the target, it shows the target's velocity or the target's closure. Oh, welcome, Flight Song fans. Aaron here, and today we have a great interview for you with Dave Bio Baranek. And Bio is going to talk to us about fighter radar. Just give us a bit of an overview of some of the basics, and um, I'm going to let him do all the talking because I'm as excited to hear what he's got to say as you probably will be. So, over to you, Bio. Okay, Aaron. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, the main purpose today, and I'm going to keep this short and, and kind of high level, is to just uh, give you some thoughts about uh, how to employ fighter radar. And I want to, in, to explain a term that I used in a recent, I think, article, or maybe I used it in Tomcat Rio. And that term is look down, shoot down. Uh, back in the 1970s, when the F-14 was new, look down, shoot down radars were big. And the main reason is that um, before that, the radars didn't have the ability to, to, uh, to, or to reliably shoot a radar missile at a target below the horizon. And the reason for that is uh, clutter. So if you look at this uh, radar picture, this is, a, uh, this is a picture, it happens to be the Strait of Hormuz, but it can be any terrain. Uh, and this is in pulse search. And pulse search is like the basic radar mode that you always think about. The radar sweeps back and forth. It shows returns of solid objects. And if you think about this, I mean, there's something up here. Uh, and this is a static picture. And if it's moving back and forth, of course, it's a little bit easier. But some of these specs up here, you don't know if those are ships, small islands, or uh, enemy fighter aircraft. And so that is the problem with pulse search. And depending on the, uh, the type of terrain, you can get more targets like that and more clutter and it's hard for the operator to detect. Uh, and in addition, the radar energy is reflected off those targets. So if you try to launch a radar guided missile and you lock your radar on one of those targets, uh, the missile may not be able to pick the target out of the clutter. So Aaron, do you think, I mean, you've been listening. Am I, is that clear? Is that concept clear to people? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think that's pretty clear. Okay. So stop me if, you know, and Aaron, you're, you're the, uh, the moderator here. So stop me if I'm, if I'm going too fast on something. No so worries. That was like the basic beginning radar. And that's the way fighter radars were, you know, in the fifties and the sixties. So then the F-14 comes along and it uses something called uh, pulsed Doppler. And instead of showing the range to the target, it shows the target's velocity or the target's closure. And so that gave it the ability to uh, track targets away from ground or th that, were, uh, that were in the ground clutter, but the target was distinguished from the ground clutter. Uh, so, Believe me, I mean, if, if you're having a hard time following this, uh, I'm doing my best to explain it, but we learned this as student Rios back in Pensacola, and then we learned it really in great detail in the F-14 reg, uh, which for me was at NAS Miramar, but also at Oceana. So that was Pulse and Pulse Doppler. So, Bye, and, sorry, can I interrupt? Yes. So, as I understand it, and I'm not... Uh, certainly not full bottles on it. So pulse Doppler, the big difference is it's more around, uh, it's not that there's an object there, it's an object that's moving re relative to the rest of the area. So for example, a plane or a ship exactly. or something. Uh, okay, so the ground clutter is not as much of an issue because the ground doesn't tend to move, correct? Exactly correct. Right. And the other thing is, uh, so by you saying the ground doesn't tend to move, if you're in an airplane flying, you know, 450 knots, the, then the radar thinks the ground is moving at 450 knots, but that's why it's got something called a clutter notch. It's, uh, it's like a basic filter and the radar has a feed in it and it says, 
okay, my aircraft is moving 450. So anything that's going 450 knots is a ground return. It's clutter. I'm not interested in it. Very clever. And so the, the problem is, you know, it can't be exactly 450 knots. And there was a, the ability of the filters to, they, they wanted it to be close, but it was more like, um, you know, from 430 knots to 500 knots or whatever. You know, there was a band mm -hmm. and that's called the clutter notch. So all these concepts are pulse Doppler radar. And until, the, uh, until that was incorporated in a fighter radar, uh, it couldn't look, do look down and shoot down. The F-14 had that ability. And so it was one of the first fighters to have look down, shoot down. Uh, I'm, you know, I haven't done the historical research to see which was the first. Uh, for example, later models of the F-4 Phantom had uh, pulse Doppler radar and then, uh, and they could do look down, shoot down. And in addition, it's as much a uh, factor for the missile itself as it is for the radar. Now, newer generation of airplanes had medium PRF processing, and that's digital processing. Uh, I'm gonna, I've got this book right here, Introduction to Airborne Radar. It talks about uh, processing bins and things like that. A little bit of light reading for the evening. <laughs> oh man, I, I tried to read that book uh, once and, and it, it was, uh, it is very deep. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm glad I have a copy. Uh, and I'm not going to talk much more about that. Medium PRF is, is the processing term that makes uh, modern radars, or since the mid-1970s, so effective. And the F-14A and B did not have medium PRF. Uh, I believe the F-14D with its uh, digital radar had, you know, medium PRF. That, that's, that's something I would have to check on. Mm-hmm. Okay, that is the definition of look down, shoot down. And I wanna go over one more subject uh, while we're here, but go ahead, Aaron, did you have a question? I was gonna ask, um, where does AESA radar fit into the picture? I know that's a newer technology and you wouldn't have dealt uh, with it. AESA in the is, the thing about AESA is that it doesn't have a, uh, an antenna that moves back and forth. And, and the, the speed of the antenna and the ability of the antenna to point uh, while in the F-14, it was very capable, and in most fighter radars, it's very capable, it becomes a limitation if you're dealing with widely spaced targets and things happening really fast. So AESA is the electronically scanned radar, uh, electronically scanned antenna. And so uh, uh, I'm going to, again, go out on a limb. I think you could, you know, if you had the computing technology, you could use an AESA antenna on almost any radar. Right. So, uh, you know, there's different, different sections of the radar. One's the antenna, one's the signal generator, one's a signal processor and all that stuff. So yeah. that, that is a good question because people are probably wondering about the uh, AESA. So you okay. said something there that, sorry to interrupt again. I got another question for you. <laughs> so yeah, okay. you, you said a word there, which I have heard in DCS world, notch or notching. So as I understand it, that's a te technique you can use, and I might be jumping ahead of where you were planning to already talk, but as I understand, it's a technique to literally avoid or hide from the radar is to, I've heard some DCS people talk about notching. Yeah, I don't want to talk too much about that. Um, but if I can find a, an illustration in this book, I'll, I'll show you what's in this book. So here's the uh, main lobe clutter. So this is ground return. And this is the notch, which cancels out the main lobe clutter. Yep. Okay. So the radar makes that invisible. And if you can fly at that speed, uh, then you're invisible to that radar too. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. All righty. Okay. On to the next step. So one other thing that I talked about was uh, in, in Tomcat Rio, I talked about when we were in Iran and we were doing mission planning. Uh, and I was doing mission, mission planning and I was thinking about, okay, if we have combat ops and I have to go and establish a, a cap station, what is my orientation going to be? 
So what I did was I made this little template and I just recreated one just now and I'll use it over the uh, state of South Dakota as an example. Cause there's so lots of bad was, guys flying around and fighters there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what I, I know. It's one of our biggest threat areas. really. So. <laughs> so if I was capping down here in uh, Southeastern South Dakota and the threat was coming from rapid city, then I could, this would help me decide where to orient my F-14 and, and what scan volume to use. And then I, I put little, uh, ticks on here so I could see range that would help me decide uh, when I would expect to, to uh, detect a threat based on, on their target size and things like that. So this was the simple, uh, simple tool that I just made and it helped me to visualize and orient myself in uh, when I was thinking about capping over hostile territory. Uh, which, I didn't use this when we were in, uh, in uh, FARP or when we were flying out of Miramar because we flew over the same place all the time and everybody was already very familiar with, you know, the best way to cap and stuff like that. But, but that, was, uh, that was something that I described in the book, Tom Cat Rio. Okay. Cool. Any other questions? Um, look, I've always been fascinated by how, how long did it take you to really learn how to use the radar properly? So it's not something you would have picked up overnight, obviously. No, that is a, uh, I like that question too, because it reminds me of, of being a new guy. Uh, I was in the RAG, F-14 RAG for about uh, 10 months. And before that, I'd been at Pensacola for about one year. And I had a combined total of about 200 flight hours when I got out of that. And probably, you know, probably about, only about 50 hours of that was, was radar work. So when I got to my F-14, my fleet squadron, I really had, you know, I was mission qualified, but I just had the bare essentials of radar skills. And it took me a few more months before I uh, started to, to just really just do things without, without thinking uh, consciously. Like, I, you know, I didn't have to think okay, I need to switch to pulse search and then I need to adjust the gain and stuff like that. After a few months, I realized that I was uh, doing it almost subconsciously. But then I can, I can think back even more and um, you know, almost a year later, eight months later, I was flying with the, in a flight with the senior Rio window and I listened to the window on the radio and, and I was going like, man, this guy is just amazing. And, and I'd been in the squadron, uh, you know, eight, 10 months, whatever it was. And, and I remember talking to him at the end of the flight and I go, window, how did you get to be so good? And he goes, well, bio, I mean, he was modest, you know, he goes, bio, I've been doing this, you know, longer than you have and stuff like that. And so eventually it comes to you, but, but it really takes time and it takes effort. Uh, I don't know if all Rios did this, but one thing also that I did was whenever I had uh, free time, like when I used to take cross countries in the United States, or when I'd be sitting out on cap, uh, boring cap flights in the middle of the Indian Ocean, I'd be playing with the radar. I'd be tweaking the pulse gain, the PD, you know, all the stuff like that. So it takes three months to get better, a year to get better. And then even when I was in the Top Gun class, uh, I was still learning things. I was going to ask you, um, I assume they added, uh, did they have a large component of radar stuff in Top Gun for you? Uh, no, and that, that's a question that people ask also. In the Top Gun class, uh, back when they had F-14s, which had pilots in Rios, every pilot in Rio went to every class together. So... Uh, when I was there, they did not have an, a, a radar class. They assume that you know that. They, in the F-14 intercepts lecture, the overland, you know, intercepts lecture, they made a few comments about radar use. Same thing in the Sparrow lecture and the Phoenix lecture. But, but there was not, you know, like a, a, a geek radar class for Rios or anything like that. The, the closest thing to that was uh, there was some electronic electronic countermeasures, electronic warfare. Um, but that, that wasn't excessive either. 
<clears throat> it was more uh, applying, you know, things tactically. Mm. And do you know if they ever introduced something like that? Because I mean, the radar has just gotten more and more capable and probably more and more complex over the years. Uh, I don't think they've gone too much more into that. Of course, nowadays, a lot of their students are uh, F-18E pilots. And so they have to use the radar themselves. Mm -hmm. And then if there are F-18Fs with WISOs, they're using the same radar. So uh, there, there's probably a little bit more detail on the radar because the Top Gun class is longer now than it used to be. So they have more time. And, and if I know them, they are going into more detail. Um, so yeah, some of that. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Good. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, to tell people a little bit more about this. That's great. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate it. Catch you yep. later. See ya. Let's go. Let's get like this up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. 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 Let's do it